I will not address any members of the audience during this speech, nor will I open the floor to questions following its conclusion. I will, however, begin by answering a question for all of you in hopes of not hearing it as frequently as I do. To answer your first question, 6'5". Six <laughs> I'm 6'5". At 6'5 inches tall, my height becomes an immediate defining characteristic for me. Rarely do I meet somebody new without being asked about my height, and nearly always it is the first topic of conversation. People often get the idea that, wow, you are so tall, is a creative and engaging icebreaker. <laughs> this is not the case, and were it not for conversational skills and repeated exposure to this comment, I could only reply to it with, I know. <laughs> Nicknames such as Daddy Long Legs and Tree have originated in this fashion because my height is the most clearly evident distinction between myself and those who surround me. Early on in human evolution, height could have been seen as a biological advantage. In the early Paleolithic era, hunters used to run for extended periods of time to tire out their prey. Perhaps my long legs could have benefited me then, two million years ago, to help capture my meals. <laughs> Even as late as the Bronze Age, the extra leverage from my long frame could have helped me hurl spears and bring buffalo, fish, or bear home to my prehistoric family. My point is, years ago, in a competitive struggle for survival, my height could have been a strategic asset to separate me from my peers. During my entire school career, starting at Calvert and making my way to Gilman, I've always been notably tall. It didn't take long, however, for me to realize that my height granted me little advantage in the framework of school life. I could reach the highest bookshelves and touch the basketball rim earlier than my peers, but I never experienced any distinctive edge over those around me for my height. My cave family would have flourished because height in the prehistoric societal framework of hunters and gatherers would have yielded me a much higher rate of survival. In spite of this fact, my experiences in school have taught me that success in our society no longer favors traits like height or the ability to outrun an antelope. Instead, survival today relies on modern society's entirely different set of favorable traits and characteristics. According to the Darwinian concept of natural selection, those with more advantageous traits will survive and experience greater success than those who lack the upper hand. Granted the phenotype of conspicuously tall with seemingly no profitable application, I began to fear for my own survival. As a species, we humans share an average of 99.9% .9 of our genetic code, yet we still exhibit extreme diversity as individuals. Diversity is most often discussed in the context of race, meaning our differences in cultural heritage. When one truly assesses our species, however, the color of our, se our skin seems trivial in comparison to the vast ideological and cerebral differences that separate us all. These are inconsistencies in our perception of the world, the values we believe in, our cognitive abilities, our personal preferences, the things that differentiate our personalities enough to make us all totally different people. The Darwinian model of humanity would argue that some of us diverse individuals are more fit for success than others in our cultural framework, in the same way that effective hunters had a better chance to succeed billions of years ago. This biological model of human life seemed practical to me. It applies to all other species on the planet, so why should it be any different for humans? Although many of us do not routinely grapple for survival, we remain in an endless state of competition among the pool of humanity. We collectively strive towards shared goals of love, financial stability, and power, and naturally some prosper more than others. According to the Darwinian model, the responsibility rests on us as individuals to apply the unique set of traits we are given to achieve success and better ourselves. This model of humanity creates a sort of battleground for us as a species. And although simplified through the, the lens of survival and natural selection, it holds true across our entire lives. We constantly compete with those around us at all ages, whether it be for dominance at recess, superiority in the classroom, acceptance into a selective university, or employment in a well-respected position. No matter what stage we find ourselves in life, we contend against a sea of intelligent peers in hopes of individual triumph. Survival may no longer be our prime concern, but we humans emulate the same Darwinian dog-eat-dog -dog struggle evident in primitive species. The inherent competition in our lives is what fuels our innovation and drives our advancement as a race. I could not deny the truth behind viewing humanity in this light. 
What struck me about this outlook, however, was how astonishingly cruel it depicted our society to be. A framework in which every individual is placed in an environment in which the most qualified succeed and the unqualified wither. The notion of this brutal, cutthroat world terrified me. Having formed strong relationships with many of my peers, it seemed unjust to have to compete in the same bracket. We are immutably competitive as a species, yet social enough to truly care about members of our community. And I simply couldn't come to terms with this duality between the contradictory ideas of loving one another and fighting against one another for survival. It seemed impossible to find joy in such a place where, regardless of the relationships we form, we still strive to selfishly outshine everyone else. There was no denying the underlying competition rooted deep in our nature, driven by our personal desire to succeed. I looked to find a way out, to develop a plan that still followed the ruthless biological model, but left room for goodwill, love, and compassion. I took a single step, and in doing so, discovered immeasurable joy as an individual member of the human race. And I'd like to share that with you, to encourage you to do the same. I took the step to recognize our equality as humans, and effectively remove malicious competition from my life. In other words, I acknowledge that we are all in the same boat, and that despite our evolutionary tendency to compete for survival, we can just as easily get along. Instantly, the fierce battleground of humanity was reduced to a haven of friendly competition. My achievements became my own, independent of my peers, and their achievements became no longer an object of envy, but a mutual celebration. Everyone around me became an equal repository for my respect and kindness. And right away, I became a 100% happier person. While we all function alone as self-governing individuals, we form a unified community within the human race, a community of vastly different individuals with similar goals. It is this element of community, not only of friends, of family, colleagues, but of humankind that I hope resonates with you the most today. Whether or not each of us harbors equal potential is impossible to know. We share 99.9% .9 of our genome with one another, Yet despite this intrinsic similarity between us, we still display incredible diversity in talent, in taste, size, color, ability, and thought. I stand one of the tallest people in the room, and it is pretty cool to say that everyone in this room, besides Ben Robbins, looks up to me. <laughs> but in the grand scheme of things, this sort of superficial discrepancy between us is hollow as we form the community of mankind. I decided that we could collectively enjoy a new existence one that ignores the competition that is deep-rooted in our soul. And I challenge you to do the same. To find delight in the people that surround you and recognize that they fight the same battles that you do. To take the triumphs of others as a prompt for self-improvement rather than a prompt for resentment and jealousy. The people I encounter on a daily basis bring to my life an infinite joy. And although we think and operate as individuals, I think we could all be a little happier if we were to stick together a little more. Thank you.